I am joined by Reba Myers from the legendary, I'm going to call you legendary now, Code Orange. Uh, Reba, how's, uh, how's the last couple of weeks been for you when you've been putting together this unplugged set that we're about to talk about? It's been good. It's been rough. Uh, a lot of work, honestly, and a lot of it's on the computer, which is very taxing in a different way. But, you know, it's been freaking great. I mean, it's it's cool to have a different kind of way to uh, showcase what we can do as a band and show our other sides. Um, so it's, it's been really good. Yeah, like I, it's one of the things I, I feel like Code Orange are one of the but one of the main examples of bands that have taken this lockdown situation and thrived within it because you are always only bound by the limitations of your own creativity, and that's that's an all right land to live in when you're in Code Orange, presumably. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, we just push ourselves constantly, and if we were just sitting around. Um, you know, thinking about tour and wishing we were on it, we would just all go crazy. So we've just kind of, it's just our natural way of finding things to keep our band, you know, active and keep making and creating art. And, you know, I've talked about it with some people like on tour, uh, it's like a perfect time for a band to grow and learn a lot of new kinds of things. Um, but without that, you know, it's easy to just hit like a wall but uh this has helped us learn a lot of new things and new ways that we can create art that we really didn't know we could even do so so which brings us very very nicely to the unplugged now my most of my i'm really glad that we get we're getting the chance to catch up because most of my correspondence for all things code orange comes through mr morgan so when it comes to putting together code orange unplugged my first thought was this is not going to be your fucking standard kumbaya, let's all slow it down, and that's all you're going to get with this. So is this unplugged, but very much through the Code Orange filter and the way that you see the world and, and your art? Yeah, I mean, it always is, you know, with us. Like, we never like to just take the basic route. You know, we, we find an idea that maybe is someone understood by people and we take that and we fuck it up a million <laughs> times until it's like very hard to understand but i think this is going to be great it's going to show that kind of other side but you know through our lens through our very twisted lens so so there was like uh, uh, this is uh, forgive me going off road for a split second so in the 90s in the united kingdom there used to be a comedy duo called newman and Badil. <laughs> Right. And they used to have a take on MTV Unplugged that was they would do the prodigy unplugged and they would just be kind of stood there dressed as a prodigy, sort of looking at each other. And then one of them would go, I'm a fire starter, twisted fire starter. And they kind of shrug and the joke would be electronics can't be made unplugged. Fast forward 20 years. And I think arguably the most exciting thing as a fan of your band going into this Mudbangers Ball presentation is just how that stuff is going to be incorporated. Like, um, is this unplugged, but not as we know it? Yeah, I mean, I don't want to give it away, but it's a fully, you know, audio visual combination of things. And if you saw our last stream, you can kind of see how far we can take it with our record release show um, in terms of, you know, really almost like you're watching a movie and the soundtrack is our band. And it's yeah. very much like that. It's just kind of the other, the other mood, you know, it takes it and I wouldn't even call it unplugged, but that's just a term that people know that they can put some context to it, but it's more just a reimagination of everything. And um, it's definitely like you can take a breath during it it's not as uh aggressive but mm. it's just as dark and it's just as brooding you know mm. that's well that's the thing with these unplugged like have you got have you got like uh, sorry to go back to the term unplugged like I, I like you're quite right it is just kind of laying it bare like this is the concept but through code orange's lens but do you have 
much memories of MTV Unplugged. Like, like in the UK, they used to just show them in the middle of the week, late at night. Like, I had the one fucking video recording of Nirvana Unplugged amongst my friends who used to always borrow it for far too long at a time. Um, do you have me many memories of those kind of sets? And was that something that you're into? I mean, yeah, I'm into it and I have memories of it, but it was more whenever I was already into music kind of on my own because I didn't grow up with MTV. Like that wasn't, mm. friends of mine did, but I didn't have it and I never really like paid attention to it. Just, mm. I don't know, I was just, just didn't know. <laughs> but yeah, we also grew up a little bit later, you know, like we were, by the time we were really starting to get into music, it was later in the 90s, you know, so mm. um, I came into it when I already like loved all those bands and was just kind of like digging around. Um, which I think is part of the reason why it's like, we have a different take on it because we're really not that generation. We're like right after, but not quite, you know, this new young generation. So it's like, yeah, we just see it all in a different way, but we're able to, see, we're able to see the, the more modern side of music as well as the nineties side of music and appreciate both ends and kind of bring the two together. So, mm. Like it was, a, it was a real thing for me. Was one of the first times that I started appreciating music outside of our walls. Was seeing it on those unplugged. So like Alice in Chains and Nirvana, obvs. But like I really fucking enjoyed George Michael, and I really fucking learned that I liked Bjork through the fucking violently happy with the fucking unplugged arrangements was absolutely insane. But there's a lot of, there's a lot of cool out atmospheric music being made at the minute. Like tools, fear inoculum was entirely about atmosphere. Chelsea Wolf, Emma Ruth Rundle, cult of Luna. Like, is that, is that a side of things that you're Sorry, into? <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. I'm into it, but, you know, I wouldn't say it was, like, an influence on me or anything, but definitely respect it, and uh, Chelsea Wolf especially is amazing, and, um, you know, it's just cool to create an atmosphere with the music, as you're saying, yeah, it's like, it makes it um, just more of a full-body experience, if that makes sense, and uh, mm. I think that's something we're really into, though I will say we uh, kind of differ in a way from a band like Tool, um, though, again, all kinds of respect to them, but our, we like to keep st everything still kind of in the form of a generally conventional song. Obviously, our song mm. structures are I mean, wild, but we all have short attention spans, you know, so um, <laughs> we like to keep things to the point and we like to still have very clear moments in the song mm. um, that you don't necessarily have to dig for. The goal for us is always to have both, you know, have the atmosphere have the movie like climax and peaks and valleys, but then also just have a song um, with moments, you know, that can be understood by mm. uh, catchy hooks and everything. Like we want all of that and it becomes very difficult to get that through, but you know, while also trying to be just unique and to ourselves and genuine, you know, getting all mm. of that across is very tricky. It's why it takes us so long to write and why, well, why we put so much time into all of that, you know, Mm -hmm. But I do think that the the stream is going to show kind of everything more at its core level, which to me is important. You know, I, I think as you're saying too, like getting into those bands through the unplugs, it, it shows you them at their core as musicians mm -hmm. almost more than just a regular live set because you can't, everything's stripped back, you know, it's almost like mm -hmm. they're being unplugged, they're being stripped back, not necessarily just the songs, but... Yeah, you know, I think that that's going to be more clear to people watching this um, for us. You know, we'll be able to see a little bit of behind the, the curtain. You know? see, that That's the most fascinating thing as coming into this particular thing with your latest record being underneath, right? When I look at Code Orange, there's probably some fun fucking Super Cyan reference that's better than Power Rangers, but stick with me. Um, like... Everyone in Code Orange brings their own element to bring this thing together to make Code Orange exactly what it is. I truly believe that there are a few bands that just wouldn't be the same without one of those things being altered in any way. And when I look 
at you, Reba, and what you bring, like on an audio level when you first get the records, the ear is drawn to the melodic side of things, right? And when you've got a record that is layers on layers on layers on layers, on layers, on layers and we're stripping it back to the core, like how the Code Orange songs fucking start? Because we are literally, like we are just delivered, here it is, here's 56 layers of fucking insanity with all of these different things going on at different points in time. And I always think to myself, where's the fucking acorn that grows into that tree? Are we gonna get a bit closer to it with this? Yeah, I mean, that's the thing though, like our band wouldn't be what we are without all those those layers you know and yeah i think there's more to it than meets the eye and i think that's what's cool about it is that it's not just all on a platter for you it's not all so obvious you know we're not just handing everyone the easy the easy path and the easy listen there's there's layers to peel back and you almost have to be a certain kind of person if you really like our band at that obsessive kind of a level and but if you are and if you care about music like like i do and like we do you'll want to dig into it like that, you know, and for those fans that understand us in that kind of way, I think this is going to be really special for them because they get to see, yeah, kind of almost, I guess you could say the beginnings of how everything is if you just pull it back a little bit. But at the same time, you know, there's still going to be very Code Orange style freaky shit, you know, <laughs> it's not yeah. just going to be that Nirvana like thrown together the last second type of thing you know we we did we're putting a lot of work into this and i think it's going to be really special and um yeah i mean is there's this, a lot of different ways to look at it but is, is this about um visual like visual visually making an impact as much as everything else because i've really enjoyed the videos on the run the run to this firstly like it's really good to see code orange having a sense of humor the video with shades was fucking brilliant um but is it about is it about that as much as it is everything else like this is a complete 360 package and imagine imagine this is an intro for someone imagine this is the first time at someone bumps into code orange like it's a crazy concept isn't it yeah i mean you know it it's hard for me to predict how people are going to understand it because i think we always understand things a little differently than the general public, you know? So we're, I'm seeing it one way, they might see it in a different way, but all I can really do is trust my instincts and, you know, same with everyone else in the band, they're trusting their instincts. And that's what makes us, us, you know, is just us doing exactly what we would do and not overthinking it necessarily, you know, and people are going to see it as special, but just because of, you know, we are, who we are hopefully. So, mm. But yeah, I mean, it'd be great if, you know, this is the first thing someone sees. I think it might be a good way in. Um, but yeah, the visuals is a huge part. It's like, it just shows the full picture of what it all means as opposed to just being like a song. You know, it gives it a whole nother world. And you can just imagine so many things from there. And um, yeah, again, it's just like, we're that type of band that we want there to be that obsession the possibility for that obsession because that's how that's the kind of music that i care about you know stuff that you mm. really dig deeper into and having the visual element um it makes that so much easier and it just like yeah it sucks you in uh, and we're lucky that we have you know shade who's so well versed in the software and able to actually create what's in our minds and create you know what the vision is without us just like throwing it together you know it's it's not just child's play type of visuals. It's like for real mm. high level shit. So I'm really proud of him for being able to do that. And last question from me today. Um, I wanted to ask about the melodic approach within Code Orange's songwriting because, like, Bleeding in the Blur on the last record was the mo still to this date the most taken aback I've been by anything that has been put out by Code Orange. It felt like a, a real, a seismic shift with no disrespect to anything else. What has been interesting about Underneath is you guys taking the approach that that melodic hook shouldn't be simplified and made easier that melodic approach should be thrown into the universal chaos that is Code Orange and become a part of it that way. 
is that a fair take on the melodic approach on underneath? It wasn't about making it syrupy and nice. It was about taking something that had worked on the last record and incorporating it into the crazy that stands before us from start to finish on underneath. Um, I mean, you know, however you look at it is fine. And like, that's not necessarily how I looked at it. I, for me, it's like, you know, but I've been in this band my whole life and obviously, and, uh, but we've had these elements in our music since we were kids. I think it's just been in like learning how to use it properly and yes, how to blend it in with everything else. And, um, I do think bleeding the blur was probably the first time you really did it in an obvious way, but you know, in my mind, it's not really like melodic and heavy. It's, they are all very intertwined, you know, and I'm always looking for melody in a heavy riff too, or in a heavy mm. song. Just It's just shown in a different kind of light. So yeah, I mean, this record, I think we were just so much more free about everything. I don't even think we had a discussion on, this is how we're going to do the melodic song. It's like, it was just yeah. all one big movie with different moods and showing different ways on how to create those moods. Um, and the, the, the line between heavy and melodic, I think was a little more free than it was on Forever. And that was the main difference is, you know, on Forever, you can really say, Bleeding in the Blur, that's a melodic song on that record. Yeah. Underneath, you can kind of say that with some things, maybe Autumn and Carbine, but otherwise, I think the line, it's a lot less clear, uh, especially with songs, you know, like Who I Am or something like that. It's like, there is a real kind of twisted aspect to that song that I think you could describe as heavy too in its own way. And same with, you know, a lot of the other songs on there underneath. And still too, it's like, yeah, maybe some heavy metal kids see, hear that and say like, oh, that's, you know, it's not metal. But on the other side, you have mainstream kids who hear that and it's like the heaviest thing in the world to them, you know, yeah. bleeding in the blur. So it's like, it's all about your perspective and it's never really just been that black and white for us like melodic songs heavy songs it's kind of just art you know and it's just there's more to it than that it's hard to explain mm. but. no no that was a great job of doing so because i think that that is very clearly the the big change between it it's easy to go bleeding in the blur and ugly on forever and you go okay there's the ones that have, have the bits as opposed to it just being omnipresent in the sound in the sound of code orange like it is on underneath uh, are you digging into all eras of code orange last question because i don't want to give away too much of it um yeah definitely i mean we're digging around doing some interesting structural structural changes to things and yeah there's there's stuff along the map that's all i can Good. Really say <laughs> All right, I'll leave it at that because otherwise I'm just going to keep probing. Reba, thank you so much for your time. Come back at the end of the year when we're discussing the best records of the year. It'd be great to have you back. Thank you, man. Would love to. I appreciate it.